Welcome back to my workshop. Now today is the next video in this series about changing blades uh, in my blade changing series. Uh, and today I need to use my bandsaw. So I have a blade and I have a bandsaw. So let's change it. Right, so the reason I need to change the blade on this bandsaw at the moment is because it's got the wrong type of blade in it and uh, I need a thinner one. Okay, so this one is for doing long rip cuts but what I need is one for doing intricate shapes. Okay, what I'm gonna do is quickly show you the quickest method I've got of changing the bandsaw blade. Uh, and first of all, let's make sure it's unplugged. Yes, it is. Okay, the particular bandsaw I'm using today uh, is a SIP 14 inch heavy duty bandsaw. It's a 01366. Uh, but the general rules of changing the blade are gonna be as similar to on most machines. Okay, uh, so first things to do is obviously we've made sure it's unplugged. Uh, this is a 14 inch bandsaw, which means it's got a 14 inch throw, which is the distance between the blade and the body. Okay, that's just the first thing to remember. Let's get the blade off. And the first thing to do is loosen off the guides. Okay, so on most bandsaws, uh, around the blades here, you have these guides. Now these are roller bearings, uh, and they basically keep the blade uh, aligned as much as they can when you're actually cutting. Now some bandsaws have uh, toolless releases on here. This one has Allen keys or Allen bolts. So basically what I've got to do is, first of all, the two side bearings, these ones here, loosen them off and they move out of the way. Just nip them up out of the way. Same with this one. Okay, let's just move those away from the blade. And there's also another one at the back here. Uh, I loosen that off and I pull that away from the back of the blade. Okay. Now, the reason you need to do that is obviously this is quite a big blade. I'm going to be putting in a thinner blade, uh, so these will be in the wrong place. Okay, that's step one done. The next step is to remove this fence. Okay, so once you've got the uh, bearings released, uh, the next step is to remove whatever fence you have. Now, in this case, it's a very simple operation you literally undo this knob at the front and you slide the fence off now your fence may be different but this needs to be out of the way okay the next bit is this rail here which is what the fence runs on uh, in this case it's tallest i literally undo four butterfly nuts at the bottom here okay they should come undone and then it pulls off okay so whatever rail you have on your machine this probably has to come off uh, not always, okay? I'll show you why it has to on this one and it may not have to on yours. Okay, on this particular table, uh, the blade release guide, okay, so this basically a groove in the table here, uh, comes towards the cutter, okay? That's why I have to remove my fence. On some other machines, it comes out of the side, okay? If that's the case, then you probably don't have to remove it, but there may be a locking clamp across the cut just to stabilize the table. In my case, this has to be removed, so that's what I've done. All right, what's next? Okay, next step on this machine uh, is to remove this little throat plate here. Uh, this one's seen some action, so it's a bit damaged, but you need to take it out to get it out of the way. I think I need a new one of these. Okay, once that's out of the way, you can then see the bearings underneath. So we've got a similar setup to these, but underneath uh, we have to remove those or we have to loosen those off as well. So let's do that. Right, we need to get to the uh, bearings underneath here, the guide bearings, uh, but we can't because there's, on this particular machine, there's a protective shield here to stop you sticking your fingers in there. Okay, you can't get to the bearings until you've got this door open. Okay, the door opens on this one, just a simple turn with a screwdriver and then the door opens. So if you can see this flap here pops out of the way and now underneath all the sawdust, I can see the bearings. So same as the ones at the top, loosen them off 
and move them out of the way. Okay, lots of sawdust, probably a good idea to get rid of that. Right, we've got the bottom door open, so now let's open the top door. Okay, opening the top door is uh, just the same as the bomb, apart from there's two unlocking points. So unlock, unlock, and that opens. Okay, so this is where you have to make sure it's turned off, even though there is a micro switch here to stop you spinning the machine up with the doors open. Uh, just make sure it's unplugged, to be on the safe side. Right, let's have a bit of a clear up in here because it's a bit sawdusty. Right, so we now have the machine cleared out. Most of the sawdust is gone. There's bound to be some more later. Uh, right, the blade is still tensioned at the moment. So the first thing you've got to do now is loosen off the tension. Now that is done by this knob on the top on my machine. Uh, most machines will be the same. Uh, there may be an additional step you have to take. But let me show you how this works. Okay, so a bit of hands-free here. Uh, right, the knob on the top, when you undo this, what it does, it undoes this thread, okay, which is attached to the top wheel. So when you undo this, the top wheel moves downwards, okay? Then that takes the tension off of the blade. So let's do that now. Okay, so now is a good time to put on a pair of gloves. So while I'm putting my gloves on, uh, on some machines, I can't show you on this one obviously because it hasn't got it, but as well as the unscrewing screw here, uh, there's also a lock nut on the top here. Okay, so you may have to undo that before this turns, okay? On this machine, I haven't got that, so I can't show you. So the blade is now loose, uh, I have my gloves on, and now what I have to do is actually move the blade this way and feed it through this hole in the table, okay? There's a cut slot here. Uh, and obviously the blade's got to pass through here and through here. Now be very careful, probably a good idea to wear safety glasses and gloves if you can. Uh, and you basically feed it off of the wheel out of both of these and through the slot in the table okay and that's off right we need a blade so you've got your old blade off uh, now luckily for me i'm just replacing it it hasn't broken or anything uh, but what dimensions do you need to order a new blade now, first of all, you need to know the length of the blade, okay? Then you need to know the thickness of the blade, okay? And you need to know how many teeth you need. Now, the teeth obviously depends on what type of wood you're cutting. Uh, the thickness obviously depends on what type of cutting you're going to do. And the length, or well, if you get that wrong, it's not gonna fit. Okay, so how do we get the length? Okay, so most of the time nowadays, obviously you've just got to have a quick search on the internet, you put in your model number and you should be able to find out the size of the blade. Uh, but the size is dependent on the top wheel here and the bottom wheel here. Okay, the size, the length of the blade is the total distance around here to there. Okay, it's not this height, it's not this height, it's the total length of the blade. Okay, now the easiest way to find out is to actually measure it. So on your machine, uh, you can basically measure, get a tape measure and measure all the way around. Uh, alternatively, you can get a bit of string and then measure the string afterwards. Okay, but the best type of tape measure to use for that 
is one of these flexible ones. Okay, this is a 15 meter one. It's made of a material, it's quite flexible. If you try and use a conventional tape measure, okay, it's a bit hard to get round corners. Okay, but with this one on your machine, you can literally wrap it around the wheels and find your total length. So I'm gonna quickly try that on this machine. Okay, so I managed to get it all the way around, which is two meters. So two, four, nine. Okay, two, four, nine, zero. That's the length of my blade. Uh, the equivalent is 98 inches. Okay, let's get a blade. Okay, so I've ordered a number of blades here, uh, and this is the one I'm going to change it with. Now this one is a three eight blade. So that's the thickness is three eighths of an inch. Okay. And as we measured, it's 2490 millimeters. Okay, so we've got the length and the width. And this one is 6 TPI. Now, I've explained in previous videos uh, about the TPI, but I'll show you again quickly. Okay, so to demonstrate how many TPI it is, uh, here's my original blade. Okay, being very careful because it's still sharpish. Uh, now, you get your rule and going from one tooth there to the one inch mark. Okay, you can see there's one, two, three, four, five. So this, in one inch, there is five teeth. Okay, that's how many TPI there are. Right, let's get this out of the bag. Right, once you actually get the blade out of the packet, it's normally got a cable tie or two cable ties holding it together and it's wound up in a coil like this. Let me show you. Okay, so we've got a little cable tie here uh, and it's wound up. So there's quite a bit of energy in this blade at the moment. Uh, so make sure you hold it tight, cut the cable tie, make sure you've got your gloves on, probably put on a pair of safety glasses and then you basically slowly under control unwind it okay and try not to poke your eyes out so that's now the blade is ready to go on so fitting the blade is the reverse process of removing it uh, hold the blade so the teeth are actually facing towards you uh, that way it ensures that the teeth are cutting down, okay, and you're not putting it on back to front with the teeth facing away from you. Okay, feed it through the table, through the guide rails, onto the wheels, through the other guide rail. Okay, and if at this point it starts springing away from you, if you use one of these little spring clips here, you could just hold it on the top wheel. Okay, it just saves it popping off without you realizing. Okay, through the guide rails and then onto the bottom wheel. Okay, it's not tight now, but it's in place. So that confirms that it's the right size uh, and you haven't made a big mistake. All right, so all we have to do now is put a little bit of tension on it. Not too much. Okay, then we can remove our clip. Right, now, tracking. So what we need to do now is adjust the tracking. Uh, but before we do that, we gotta make sure it's tense enough that we can actually turn the wheel uh, and it's under the right tension. So at the moment, it sounds a bit loose. Okay, I've just put a bit of tension on there. Now on some machines, on either the door or under here, you may have a gauge that shows you what size blade it is and how tense it should be. Okay, I don't have that on this machine. So I'm gonna go for tuning. 
Okay, I'll adjust that again in a moment after I've done the tracking. So what is tracking? Uh, on here, you can see the blade is quite a way back on the actual wheel, okay? On this black bit, which is the tire, okay? The blade, the teeth of the blade is quite a way back, okay? So as it's turning, the actual teeth are quite a way back. Now you can adjust that position. Obviously, once it's in the right orientation, that's not gonna change until you actually change the pitch of the wheel, okay? And you do that by on the back of the machine here, okay, amongst all this other rubbish, okay, you have this, which is for adjusting the tracking. Okay, it's got a locking nut on it here. You undo the locking nut, okay, and you're gonna be turning this knob, okay, so either clockwise or anti-clockwise. And I'll show you the effect that has while you're spinning the wheel. Okay, so if you watch the blade here carefully, what I'm going to do is turn this, but also turn the tracking knob. Okay, I'm turning it anti-clockwise now, and it's coming further and further forwards. Okay, I've only turned it about a quarter of a turn, but it's now come forwards. Okay, if I keep on turning it, it comes even further forwards. Okay, and obviously if you turn it the other way, yeah, you can actually see the blade going further back. Okay, so what you do is you adjust that to where you want the blade. Now some people have it right at the front of the tire and some people have the teeth in the middle. Uh, I'll probably go somewhere in between, so probably about there. Okay, and then all you do is you tighten up the locking nut. Okay, give it a nip up. Yeah, give it another spin just to make sure it doesn't move. Okay, so I'm quite happy with that position. Right, now I can do my final tensioning. Okay, and then give it one more spin. Ah, uh, see, look, I've changed the tension and it's now further forwards. So I adjust the tracking once more because I want it to go further back. Okay, and repeat this process until you get the blade in the right position and at the right tension. Okay, I'm happy with that. Lock it up. One more spin. We're good to go. Okay, so our blade is on, our blade is tight, our blade is locked up, the tracking is locked, we're happy with it, it's all good. Right, before we shut the doors, uh, what I've got to do is move the guide bearings back into position because obviously once I shut the bottom door, I can't get to the rollers. Now let's do that. Okay, so where we've changed it from a uh, quite a thick blade to a fairly thin blade, uh, we've got to make sure that these rollers are now in the right position. Now what you need is you need this roller to be behind the teeth, okay? Not running against the teeth, but behind the teeth. Uh, and on this machine, you literally undo this nut, okay? and it allows you to slide the rollers backwards and forwards. Okay, so you position that, so the edge of this roller is behind the front teeth. Okay, obviously if you have it running on the teeth, all that's gonna happen is your blade is gonna get blunt very quickly. Okay, nip that up. Okay, check again. Yeah, they're behind the front teeth. All right, the next bit is to move the back roller. Okay, so the back roller here, okay, these really need changing because they're a bit grunchy, but I'm going to do it just for now. Now the back roller has to come, bring it forwards just to contact the blade, okay, and then maybe back it off just a little tiny bit. What you don't want is you don't want that rolling on the blade all the time. 
Okay, it will roll on the blade once you start putting some pressure on the blade. Okay, so give that a nip up. So that the idea of that is to stop the blade getting pushed backwards. Okay, now onto the, both the side rollers. All you do, loosen off again, bring them up close to the blade. See that from the front. Okay, you bring them both in close to the blade. So they're both just touching the blade. Okay, and then just back them off a little teeny tiny bit. Again, you don't want them rubbing on the blade, otherwise it makes a hell of a noise. Nip them up. Okay, so both of them should be turning and the back one should be turning without rubbing on the blade. Okay, and they should be behind the front teeth. All right. So once they're all nipped up, that's them done. Now you've got to do exactly the same on the bottom ones. Right, once you've got your top and your bottom runners uh, all adjusted correctly, you can now shut the doors. Okay, easy peasy. Now obviously on the bottom one, on my machine, you've got this little finger guard. That's got to come up as you're putting it in. Okay, lock the door. Right, next. Okay, next you can refit your throat plate. Okay, making sure that it lines up correctly. Pops in. Then the rail on the front here. Okay, making sure that these grooves actually correspond to these. Otherwise you'll end up troubles. And then put your fence back on. Yeah, not a very good fence at all. Right. Okay, so the fence is back on, the front rail's back on. Okay, the throat plate's back in. These are adjusted, the bottom's adjusted, the tracking's adjusted, everything's adjusted. Uh, final checks to make sure your blade is running square. So using a known good square, make sure the blade is perpendicular to your bed. If you need to adjust it, underneath is an adjusting bolt, okay, under here, okay, and what that does is that tilts the table this way or this way, okay, that's under there. I don't need to adjust it because this is nice and square. Right, I think we're ready to start it up. We'll move that first. Okay, so we're ready to start up again now. Uh, as always, after you've changed the blade on something, uh, before you start it up, make sure you take all the precautions uh, because obviously it's a new blade. You don't know what it's gonna do. You think you know what it's gonna do, but be prepared. All right, so let's plug it in. Okay, never stand in front of the blade when you're gonna start it up, just in case. Okay, listen for any abnormal noises or if the blade's wobbling or anything like that. Okay, I'm confident now that that's okay. Uh, what I've got to do now is do a quick test cut. Uh, so I better go and get a piece of wood and quickly check it. Right, so that's about it. I've now changed the blade on my SIP bandsaw. Uh, I've used these Excalibur uh, bandsaws, which are from Axminster Tools. These are excellent. If you could ever get hold of these, these are the ones to have. Okay, this is ready to go now. I can carry on with the project I was doing. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Now the 14 inch is this depth here. You can't see that because my arm's in the way. Okay, next step is just to pop out this little throat plate here. Uh, seen some action this one. 
but let's pop it out anyway. I can't because I've stuck it in. It is one of these flexible ones, okay? If I can get it on. Lift that up when you're pushing it back in place. We can't do any of that. We can't do any of that because I've got to adjust the bloody bottom rollers and I'll... Right. 